Welcome to Friday of the week that changed everything. This is traditionally the day we refer to as Good Friday, and you'll see in just a few minutes why that is. Uh, as I read a section, a portion of today's reading, daily reading, from Mark chapter 15, I want you to keep this monument behind me in mind. I stumbled upon this while I was hiking. It's about four feet in height, so somebody took some time to set this up at some point. But keep the idea of a monument in mind as we look today at God's Word. The reading, of course, is longer than I'm going to read. It's chapter 15 of Mark, verses 16 down to 39. But let's pick it up, the story, in verse 33. Mark 15, 33 through 39. And when the sixth hour, noon, had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour, 3 p.m. And at the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, Behold, he is calling Elijah. And someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come and take him down. And Jesus uttered a loud cry and breathed his last. And the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. And when the centurion who stood facing him, the Roman soldier who was there next to the cross, saw that in this way Jesus breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. Now, let's go to that idea of monuments. Did you notice there were two monuments in that passage, two monuments that I'd like to, to, to focus on? The first monument is this huge uh, woven veil that existed in the Jerusalem temple. It was a physical barrier, but also representative of a spiritual barrier. It was a physical barrier separating the the holy place from the most holy place or the holy of holies in the temple in Jerusalem. But it was a symbol of a spiritual barrier that existed between uh, a perfect God and imperfect people like us, between a holy God and sinners like you and me. The second monument is the cross of Jesus itself. Uh, the cross on which Christ was crucified. It was symbolic. Uh, the piece of wood put in the ground to which Jesus was uh, nailed, uh, this was a picture. It becomes a picture for us of his death, his sacrificial death for imperfect people, for sinners like you and me. Now, we see the connection between those two monuments, don't we? We see that right there in the text, as soon as Jesus died, that great curtain within the temple was torn in two. What a beautiful and powerful picture of how we have now have access to the presence of God, to fellowship with God, because of what Christ accomplished for us on the cross. Through his death, he accomplished this access for us into a relationship with God. Two monuments connected together. Now I want to ask you, is the cross a monument in your life? As you travel uh, through your life, your heart and mind, as you travel those roads within you, thinking about all the, the things that make you you, thinking about all the people in your circle, all the responsibilities you have, every aspect of your life. As you travel that road, is the cross there regularly? Is it set up like this monument, always there to remind you about who you are in light of the grace of God, in light of what God has done? Paul talked about in Galatians 2 that he had been crucified with Christ, and now he lived a very new life life, a new chapter of his life, a brand new life, because it wasn't him who was living anymore, but it was Christ living through him. I pray on this Good Friday that you would experience the goodness of God, the goodness of the cross of Jesus in connecting you 
with a very good God, a great and good God, who wants you to experience all the goodness of a new life in which the cross becomes a monument marking the transformation that only he can make possible. Let's give praise to God this day. Let's thank God this day for his incredible work through the sacrifice of Christ.